Good evening. My name is Dr. Sunit Mittal. I'm joined this evening by Dr. Daniel Aliash, and we are here for Heart Rhythm TV Breaking News. For the second time in just 10 days, a high-profiled American has suffered a presumed cardiac arrest. Dan, we've just gotten over the entire story of Damar Hamlin, and this evening we're learning about the untimely denies of a second prominent American, namely Lisa Marie Presley, who we believe may have died uh, from sudden cardiac death due to cardiac arrest. You know, pretty devastating. What are your early thoughts about what we're hearing? Well, uh, uh, thank you very much, Sunit. Um, first off, my heart goes out to, to the family and to everyone affected by this really, really unfortunate incident. Um, you know, I, I can't help but think about, you know, out of hospital cardiac arrest, um, the most common cause of sudden death in the United States. And the data show us 9 to 12% of, of people survive such an event. I mean, that's really, really, um, I guess, in a way, shocking. And we received the, the welcome news that Damar Hamlin left the hospital recently, neurologically intact, but we could not necessarily, we cannot say the same thing about Lisa Marie Presley. And that's, that's very, very disheartening. So why the differences? I think, you know, when you hear such sad news, all you can, all you can say is, what can we learn from this? Um, you know, contrasting the two cases, Damar Hamlin, um, received prompt CPR, prompt defibrillation, okay? Um, and we don't know the details of what happened with Lisa Marie Presley, but we do know what likely contributed to the success of Damar Hamlin. So let's touch on cardiac arrest. You know, what are the most common causes? And I'll put that back to you, Sunit. Talk a little bit about that for us. Yeah, so I think that certainly, you know, when it comes to sudden cardiac death, uh, you know, one of the important things to recognize is that these are people who are perfectly fine uh, one minute and the next minute, you know, in their midst of a catastrophic event. Of course, we had the opportunity to see DeMar's case on live television. You know, he's playing, you know, high level professional uh, sport. And the next thing, he's in the midst of a cardiac arrest. Many of us saw Lisa Marie on the Golden Globes with our families just the other night, you know, looked like a perfectly normal person who could have, you know, expected this catastrophic event, you know, just a couple of days later, both of these people incredibly young, not the kinds of people you would expect this type of event to occur. So what happens, you know, well, you know, often it's an arrhythmia, uh, something called ventricular fibrillation, an irregular and rapid rhythm from the bottom chamber of the body. And as you said, Dan, unless there's prompt CPR and defibrillation can be often very difficult to resuscitate the patient. And as electrophysiologists, we're humbled by how many people continue to die each year from sudden cardiac death. Yeah, yeah I want to, the excellent points there. And Sunit, you know, we at the Heart Rhythm Society, right, electrophysiologists, we specialize in heart rhythms. And day in and day out, you know, what we try to do is alleviate suffering and alleviate um, the, the burden of disease related to heart rhythm disorders. And cardiac arrest or lethal heart rhythms coming from the bottom chambers of the heart are some of our most vexing, um, our most vexing enemies. And so when we see something like this, I know we, I think the important thing to do is to raise awareness. Cardiac arrest happens suddenly. It happens to people that seem healthy. Additionally, um, you know, thankfully to, to, to all the progress we've made in electrophysiology as heart rhythm specialists and heart rhythm society, we can treat this and, and reverse it if we promptly recognize the signs and symptoms, right? So someone that goes down suddenly, loses their pulse, right? Is not breathing. We're gonna, we're gonna initiate prompt CPR to perfuse or give blood flow to the brain while we try to identify why the patient had cardi cardiac arrest. And then if, if the patient has a rhythm, like an abnormal heart rhythm coming from the bottom of the heart, like you mentioned, Suni, that can be reversed with a shock, you can restore normal heart rhythm uh, with a shock and then re and restore normal blood flow to the brain during that time. And so, I guess as people 
who who deal with this day in and day out. It's very sad for us to see this happening, but it's also a, a really important opportunity in public awareness to say, hey, this is cardiac arrest, and this is how we can recognize and treat it. So um, Sunit, if you wouldn't mind commenting to, to everybody, you know, what are the common causes that lead to cardiac arrest? And not to conjecture too much about Lisa Marie, because we don't know enough to really comment on what is the exact cause. Yeah, Dan, you know, uh, you know, oftentimes people have pre-existing medical issues, uh, most commonly in the United States, some coronary artery disease. Sometimes you have a genetic abnormality. Uh, you know, in the case of Damar, of course, it's been postulated that maybe the impact of the tackle, you know, caused uh, something called commotia cordis and may have precipitated the event. But the key is, of course, that in every patient, it's a different cause, and that requires a thorough investigation. Uh, but what is uh, critical uh, in, in most cases is what you mentioned, CPR, and prompt defibrillation are often, uh, you know, the keys to survival. And certainly in the next days to weeks to come, we'll likely get more information uh, about more granular details about both of these high profile people, you know, one who survived and another one who unfortunately seems to have succumbed to this disease. Thank you, Sunit. And, and so I guess, you know, the take home points are, you know, this this occurs, recognizing it, treating it with CPR, and then getting EMS, getting emerg emerging medical services on the scene to transport the patient to a, the person to a high level care is the best way for us to ensure a good outcome. And, and as a reminder to, to, to those watching, only nine to 12%, nine to 12% survive to the end of the hospitalization. So if we could bend the needle, if we could improve our access to prompt CPR, train more people, train more bystanders, if we could improve our access to AEDs that can be applied, defibrillation devices that can be in common areas to identify shockable rhythms and, and, and reverse this, this, uh, these horrible situations, I think we could improve the outcomes. Um, so we're so sorry to see another event like this, but we hope as Heart Rhythm Society, we can improve awareness and learn from such tra tragic events. Well, Dan, I couldn't agree more. Thanks for joining me uh, tonight to really discuss your early thoughts. Again, a very devastating uh, event just coming, you know, days after something, uh, you know, that was uh, seen on national television. Uh, and I hope as more details come together uh, that we will continue, you know, to devote our resources to eliminating the scourge of this devastating uh, illness. Uh, so again, thanks uh, for joining me this evening and I wish everyone a very pleasant evening. Thank you very much, Sunit.